Hi there, I'm Grant Stinchfield. Our way of life is under attack. From forces here in America and beyond, ISIS and other fanatical jihadi holy warriors want nothing more than to move fighters in large numbers into America. It's clear there are already some of them here. If we don't destroy ISIS in places like Iraq and Syria, it's just a matter of time before ISIS expands its reach deeper into U.S. soil. The fight against ISIS is being played out in a fight in Mosul. Colonel Oliver North is in Iraq witnessing the battle. He filed this report for NRA TV. This is the town of Bashika taken just yesterday by the Peshmerga. We're going to take you through this town to see the destruction wrought by ISIS. Just beyond Bashika, Mosul, the big fight that's yet to come. What you see here is the way of war for ISIS. Bashika was once a thriving metropolis of over 5,000 souls. There's no one left. The place is totally destroyed. This is why the Kurds want to drive them out of their territory. These red flags alongside this road are an indication of what the big challenge is here. They'll say this area has been secured, meaning there are no ISIS troops left in it. But it's not cleared. Secured but not cleared means there are tens of thousands of these improvised explosive devices, some of which have been found and marked, but many more have yet to be found. Well, it is our great pleasure to welcome Colonel Oliver North, retired NRA TV commentator who is in Iraq, uh, not far from Mosul. Colonel North, it's great to have you on. Uh, it's frightening to see that those landmines are still there, and I have to imagine they're a danger not just to the fighters, but also citizens in the area. You know, one of the things they would really appreciate out here is some more of these sniffer dogs that the U.S. military has so many of. They are the best mine detectors, IED detectors, that the world's ever known. And the good Lord made them that way. Uh, out here, you just don't move around much if, you, if you're on the line uh, after dark because you can't see what you might be stepping on. And quite frankly, the Kurdish, the Kurdish Peshmerga soldiers are some of the bravest folks I've ever seen because they go right out after the enemy knowing that these kinds of things are on the ground and taking the fight right to ISIS. Well, Colonel, I know the fight for Mosul has been going on since mid-October. Um, how is it looking? Because Mosul is key to get control of Iraq, and I think even if we get back Mosul, Iraq's future is still uncertain. No, there's no doubt about it. Uh, and Syria certainly is, cannot ever again be a safe haven for an organization like ISIS. It's important that Mosul be taken. There's no doubt that this has got to happen, and it's going to happen over the course of many, many more weeks to come, Grant. What you're looking at is the Peshmerga, which have decided they're not going to go into an Arab territory and seize it. The Kurds are going to protect Kurdistan. And so what's now taking place is an attack from the east by the Iraqi army, which has been trained by the U.S. to a certain extent, uh, one of their brigades was savagely uh, dealt with here just a, a, about a week ago. Uh, they're now working their way very, very slowly through because you have to clear not only the area in front of you, but because of the tunnel networks, they have to clear the area behind them. And what the Kurds have done is essentially isolated uh, Mosul from the Kurdish territory, which they call, appropriately, Kurdistan. Colonel North, we saw Chuck Holton's report yesterday, and, and he had some of the refugees, one young lady with her, with her arm blown off. It, it strikes me because we had Iraq in our control. Uh, Syria was okay. I, I firmly believe that Barack Obama created this vacuum that allowed ISIS to rise up and flourish and now pose this great danger to us. Uh, am I wrong in that assessment? No, look, the, 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 what the troops called when it happened in 2011, the December 2011 bug out, they call it the Obama bug out, pulling 10,000 American troops out of here literally in, the, in a matter of less than 15 days. That left the vacuum for which ISIS took advantage of. Most of the ISIS commanders, the emirs that lead at the company level, are former Republican guardsmen. They managed to attract a fair number of people from other countries, the so-called uh, imports that came through Turkey to get here. And now you have one of the most complicated situations we've ever faced, certainly in modern times since perhaps World War II. Uh, we've got Turkey looking at, they've got forces in here. The artillery that was firing over our head last night was Turkish artillery landing in Mosul. You've got Russian aircraft flying over Syria. You've got the Iranian 
if you will, provisional military units that are trained, led, and equipped by the Iranians operating in the western side of, of the city of Mosul, second largest city in all Mesopotamia, not just Iraq. And you look at those kinds of complicating circumstances, this administration created this terrible mess. It's going to fall to the new administration as they're going through transition right now to come up with answers to it. And reports like this hopefully are being seen by those in the transition saying, gosh, who's our ally out in this part of the world? I'll give you my assessment, having now covered this war for 59 embeds over the last 15 years. The best friends we've got in this part of the world are the Israelis in Israel and the Kurds here in Mesopotamia. You can count on them both. If this administration, the new administration coming into town doesn't realize that, they better get somebody out here who does. And I'll introduce them to the folks in Kurdistan who will stand with them through thick and thin. Well, I do believe the Kurds are the unsung heroes in all, in all of this war, as you sum it up. Have you heard from the administration at all, Colonel North, for, for your advice? Uh, well, I, I do watch the news. Uh, and on, uh, on opportunities when I have, if somebody asks me, I'll give them an answer. But the answers best come from those of us who've been covering this literally now since 9 11 01. The situation we've got right here in this particular country is as complicated as anything you could possibly imagine. And hopefully, the new administration coming into town is going to pay very close attention to it. Because if things go upside down with Turkey, we'll have no friends out here but Israel. Yeah, and we've got to have some friends on the ground. What scares me so much, Colonel North, is that we are fighting an enemy that literally has no conscience. And I believe that is the most dangerous enemy in, of all. I've seen they're willing to booby trap children's toys that ISIS is. Oh, Grant, let me tell you, we don't put on the air, as you know, the exhumed bodies in these mass graves. We don't do that. Uh, there is no doubt that ISIS represents the most brutal adversary that we've faced since the Pacific theater of World War II. Uh, it's very difficult to contend whether you're a Kurdish Peshmerga or a U.S. Army Special Operations guy or a Marsat or a SEAL. It's very difficult to contend with an enemy that's not just willing to die. We've all been willing to die for one another but an enemy that wants to die. And that's what they've been up against in this fight. Can I ask you one last question? Uh, sure. Baker al-Baghdadi, the leader of ISIS, there are reports that, that he's angry, that he's gone underground. I'm skeptical of those reports. What's your assessment of where Baker al-Baghdadi stands right now and, and his confidence? Well, where does he stand is a better question than, than anybody can answer. I mean, where is he? Uh, he's certainly not here anymore. He may be in Raqqa. Perhaps he's in Sirt in, in Libya. Uh, or any one of the other 30 countries where ISIS now has a foothold. I mean, again, what we're looking at is, a, is an organization, ISIS, that is now spread internationally around the globe. It threatens every positive interest of the United States. It's threatened Americans and killed them at home. And, and what we've got to make sure we do is we decapitate this organization, make sure it has no safe havens from which to promulgate the propaganda. And we're getting a lot of help from the Kurds in this. Hopefully the Iraqi army is going to persevere in their fight for Mosul and make sure that it never comes back to this part of the region again. Well, let's hope, Colonel North, you, you, you and, and the Peshmerga there, the Kurds and the Iraqi army and all the others are successful in this fight. It's, it's that important. Hey, will you stay safe out there, sir? And, and uh, to Chuck Thank Holton you. as well, you guys be safe. Thank you for your time. Thanks, Graham. That is Colonel Oliver North. It's a great pleasure having him on. We are back here at the top of the hour for NRA TV. And as he summed that up, uh, that fight is important, and I believe it's about the safety and security of Americans here at home. I'm Grant Stinchfield. Stick with us.